Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Beatit Koshi of Mavenir. Beatit, great to see you again. Are you aware yet of what the network economics are as 5G is going to be concerned? Well, uh, f uh, a lot of studies uh, are being done uh, by 5G. Uh, then, uh, if I may quote uh, McKinsey's in a recent article, who uh, has published an analysis that they did where 5G costs are, are double what the 4G costs are today, at the very least. That's one uh, data point that I refer to. The second one is um, a study that one of the investment banks had done uh, last year out of Wall Street, where they uh, basically concluded that the number of uh, radio access sites for 5G services with 5G SLAs uh, required will increase by two orders of magnitude, so about, about 100 times. Now, even if it's not 100 times, even if it's 10 times, that is totally unsustainable for the operators today to deploy the architectures and the solutions that they have today because it just will not fit in in their overall budgets, will not fit in um, their all economics. We're talking about major costs in the radio access side, we're talking about major costs in the transport side, and major access in the core and data center side. Uh, however, there are technologies available, uh, and the pioneering way has been shown by the, um, the FANG uh, companies. Uh, absolutely, Netflix is there, Facebook is there, Google is there. Uh, what, we, what is available today is web scale architectures. Cloud native applications, built on microservices, running on platform as a service solutions, running on you know, COTS, uh, common off the shelf hardware, which is uh, you know, a, a commodity these days. And that enables the optimal kind of a performance on the balance sheet as well as on profit and loss for various service providers going forward. In the course of what you were saying to the answer to the previous question, you talked about top line and bottom line challenges. Yes. Can you articulate a bit more on that? What are they? What are the top line and what are the bottom line? Absolutely where do they right. meet in the middle? Absolutely right. So if you look at the bottom line, for example, uh, you have a data growth uh, which doubles every 18 months. So that data growth needs to be served by a certain infrastructure. Today, that infrastructure consists of dedicated boxes or at least some software which runs on a kind of a dedicated, isolated hardware. That means that a uh, service provider will spend an awful lot of um, capital expenditure. With capital expenditure, then we're talking about the increased footprint. Increased footprint means higher rental cost, higher utility cost, higher operational cost, higher support costs. So just from that CapEx and OPEX perspective, you know, uh, you grow uh, exponentially as well. And then of course you can negotiate and you can involve in procurement exercises, but you're trying to fit something which is not fitable. Whereas, as an engineering community, we need to look at innovative solutions. So if it is possible for one of the um, um, web scale uh, well-known uh, brands to run, for example, the entire operation in, in Asia Pacific with 35 people. Why is it not possible for a telco operator to do that? Uh, and um, so that's from a bottom line perspective. Uh, the major cost points are again on, on real estate around radio access side, uh, on the transport lease line perspective, uh, as well as uh, the overall operations around core and data center side. Uh, when it comes to the top line, is the ability to, to launch a product. So five, in 5G, we should reduce the time to market from many months to several hours. When we uh, download uh, over-the-top applications like WhatsApp and Viber and Facebook and so on, it's an experience that lasts several tens of seconds. If we think that as an industry, we are a viable consumer and enterprise partner and it's going to take us nine months plus, even nine weeks plus, then we're probably not competitive with some of the new ideas come, coming from uh, other sectors that are trying to basically come in and also uh, transform the telecommunication sector as well. And I'm sure people have seen the plan like this, well publicized by the likes of Facebook and Amazon and so on. Good answer, thank you. Last question to you. You mentioned access just then. Vincent. Yes. How, is, how important in, is virtualization in access for operators as they go along the road to 5G? Virtualization in access is critically to ensure economically viable network architectures of 5G. 
I would argue that it's even the case for 4G right now, but for 5G, absolutely critical. There was a lot of hesitance in the industry about virtualizing voice-related network functions, but we have done that since 2013, and Mavenir was actually the first company to conclude that contract uh, with a large operator in Germany. Uh, then it was a lot of nervousness around pocket core because of data crunching, and there's nervousness today. However, as the silicon advances, as the Intel and the similar chip manufacturer advances their silicon, the radio solutions can absolutely run on an agnostic hardware. What does that mean? Not only that you can release pressure from cell side deployments, but you can also move the functionality closer to where the demand is, combined with the Vault Packet Core functionality, or you can move functionality away if that demand is not there for non-mission critical application, for example. So it does allow a total flexibility from a network function perspective and from feature functionalities to tailor the service towards specific segments. And I'm hoping that this industry are going to start targeting various segments and there are solutions like network slicing and so on that will enable this to differentiate against the over-the-tops or web-scale suppliers. Another good answer. Thank you. Thank you. Martin, thank you very much uh, for hosting me again.